My name is John Fireball. I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. I've spent oh 30 some years in the construction business and kind of decided helping my wife out when she was doing websites to get into building some websites. Learned about Drupal a few years ago and I can tell you right now that I do not write PHP. I put everything together from the UI and that's what we did with this website here. So it's kind of like the, you have the guy come out to uh, fix your refrigerator and he kicks it and you say, I could have done that. And he said, yeah, but I knew where to kick it. So that's, that's kind of what it is like when you, when you put things together. You don't have to know how to wire a house, but you do have to know how to turn on the lights with the switch. So, um, so this website uh, is a client of mine and they had a um, no online presence and they wanted to just have a brochure website. So basically we started with a brochure website. Um, but before I go on, I want to say that the sign up there, Fireball City Limit, that's in California. That's my son. My Drupal handle JJ Monterey is because he was out in Monterey at the time at the uh, learning a foreign language for the Air Force. So that's kind of how that all started. Also, I want to put a plug in for the Boundary Waters. Anybody here from out of Minnesota or in Minnesota? So, National Geographic says Boundary Waters is one of the 50 places in the world you should visit. And that's my kayak there. I was there Monday. Did eight portages, about 15 miles. And I'm getting too old to do that. So, All right, so... Rapid response management. Uh, the principals are experienced certified managers in, in uh, doing basically EPA type cleanups. Certain materials, if a client cleans it up themselves, they can be in for some huge fines. And uh, it's not too long ago, a couple, two, three years ago, I believe Target, and don't quote me on this, had a rather large fine because they were not disposing of some things in stores properly but I don't I don't know that for a fact but I was told that so their businesses they provide rapid response times so that um, in other words they try to get people out there within two hours of a spill it could be at a Home Depot that's one of their you know, clients that they work with and, and, and they've got many others so this is what the site looked at when we started it's um, it's just basic. There's nothing, nothing really going on here. It's, it's. Uh, they had someone design their logo, and we, we just put together a site that just told what they did. Okay, now the modules that we used when we started getting into more uh, performant or or workflow type things are here on the uh, on the screen. It's. Uh, ACL, content access, field permissions, those all handle who gets to look at what files, what fields on the site. Uh, the display modules, I use display suite, uh, DS, extra layouts and views. Uh, we use, uh, uh, we generate PDFs and uh, uh, the module for that was PDF using MPDF, which also requires a library uh, to use that. Um, File storage, file field paths, file field sources, auto, auto entity labels, um, entity reference modules, very important. Entity reference, entity tokens, entity reference autofill, and entity connect. Uh, upload databases, feeds and feeds tamper, and then other uh, modules that uh, are, are very important are the, uh, the in, in our workflow anyway, is the multi-upload uh, Rules, conditional rules, geofield, geolocation, better exposed filters, field collection, field group. So I'm, I'm going to try to explain what uh, what we did and what some of the pain points were. Keep in mind, there's real, there's no custom PHP, no custom JavaScript. So everything that happened here is due to the work of the awesome Drupal community that writes some pretty cool modules. So. 
after we did the brochure site, the first thing they said was, can we upload files to our website? What, what they were doing was they had a workflow where they'd get a call from a client. We have a spill here, and they pull up a Word document, okay, and they'd start filling it in. It was a template. Well, every time they opened this Word document, they had to fill all these fields in all over again. So later on, we fixed that. But So we did the file upload, and what they were doing was they'd get these photos in, and people would fax them or email them. They'd scan them, and they'd upload them to Dropbox, the files. Um, and so what we did was we created just a job, a, 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 a um, content type called job files. And that one there I think is a Costco job, and, and we just had two fields. We had one that was info, and they could upload various PDFs, docs, or whatever, and the other one was photos. That worked okay. Only one problem. Every time they saved the content type authorization to respond, Drupal knew where it was. If you pulled up the node, it knew which authorization to respond was, but if you went on to the um, hosting company, authorization to respond was, the next one was one. The next one was authorization to respond to, so you didn't know what jobs they went to. That's why we started using file field paths. If you use file field paths, you can then create a folder automatically that has that job name on it using tokens, and then everything for that particular job goes into that folder. So basically, this is this shows the um, how we <coughs> we started uh, labeling uh, each file. So they upload this PDF that's called uh, Costco 0823 PDF such and such PDF. And it automatically, using an auto entity label with tokens, we could create that file. And if you look over then in the folder, we also created that folder using file field pass. So everything related to that job then is in that folder. So later on, if you had to search for something for some reason that you didn't, you know, you needed to have all that information, it was then segregated. Kind of like making a tree instead of a whole flat file that everything's there and you have to search through the whole thing. So that's file field paths. Okay, so this is the setup for file field paths. Oops, excuse me. All right, so you can see at the top. There it is right there. Um, that it's using the token job files. The path is job files slash no title. By the way, these are all in a private private uh, folder so that it's not publicly accessible. And the file name was generated by I don't know, excuse me. The file name was generated by that by tokens also. It says name only original, extension original, blah, blah, blah. And we did it for upload. So we wanted to upload the files um, rather than use another source, which would be um, MC File Browser, whatever, in the remote URL. So this is one of their original Word templates. You can kind of see what, what they've got. They've got some inf information on their address, where the site is they have to work, uh, a bunch of, uh, of different things, and they would fax this out uh, to people or email it. This is what we ended up and created. We, made a, we created so you had a node, and the spill report was, was generated like this. Is that the spill report? Yeah. So, after they sent people out in the field, they used to have to fill all this stuff in. Now that we use an entity reference, a lot of the fields will auto-fill. Auto 
Um, I used display suite to set this up so that, you know, this is their old one. No, this, let's see. Yeah, so basically what we do is, is the uh, display suite takes over some of the HTML markup and you can change it to kind of uh, compress things and, and make it uh, a little quicker. So one of the things we did with this was, and, and I want to say, it's kind of got cobbled together because they, they'd come to me and they'd say, we want to do this, and we'd add, we'd add one thing. And they'd say, we want to add this, and we'd do another thing. So one thing you have to do is you have to kind of look at their efficiency. I, I made a lot of changes to their workflow just by going into their, their office and saying, well, you don't need to do this, you don't need to do that. So basically, we, we, we streamlined the whole process. So now they get a call. They just go right to the website and start filling out the form. So this is the workflow. Identify the current documents generated, the flow order the client uses, identify duplication, which they had a lot of duplication, bottlenecks and other needs. Uh, <clears throat> identify all the fields required to generate the documents and there's a lot of fields. Identify fields that are common to the different documents. And the reason for that is using entity reference and entity reference autofill, you can then reference the previous document and autofill these fields so that they don't have to fill every field out again, which is a real time saver. Um, identify the hierarchy of the content. Um, that means the content that helps generate other content. So the workflow is that they would create an authorization and eventually, and I'll get to it later, we automatically created a spill report and a job file along with some other things and that they, they constantly changed because there was always something new we wanted to do. Uh, so procure build databases that can be used to autofill forms what we did there was, sure, they had clients, they had Southwest Airlines, Costco, Home Depot. I said, well, do you have a database? We, if, if you want to pre-fill pre fields, address fields, and you want to pre-fill a lot of information, I said, do you have a database? No, we don't have a database. So there's a place online you can go called Ag Data, I think. And we purchased <coughs> databases for six of their main clients. Some of the other ones, um, they go, they, they kind of just build it as it goes. So, and I'm thinking that those were 150 bucks a piece, I'm not sure, but something like that. Um, determine the form layouts and the test, and then test for input efficiency. So we, we created some forms and then they would do them and, we'd, and they'd say, well, I'd rather have this field up here, you know, because it's kind of the order we work. So we, we changed them around like that. Determine the modules necessary, and if necessary, write custom code. Well, there's no custom code on this site, other than some display suite code, and that's not really code so much as, as plugging some tokens in. Um, and then if further automation is necessary, use rules to enhance the process. And that, that's where we got into some some really streamlining how things happened. So, where am I here? Okay, so you can kind of see this is this is the. Can you can you read that? So I've got a bunch of fields here that we uploaded from say whatever uh, vendor we had. Or, or client, so it has a title, cl client site name, spill site, street, city, state, zip, location phone, client geolocation, and EPA ID number. I will tell you that the, the database didn't come with geolocations, so I spent a fair amount of time on Google, going to Google Maps, on some of, some of them, some of them uh, they did. Um, but you can these were some that were added that were inaccurate that I had to do that. Um, you can actually use geocoder to, to find those things using street addresses. Um, but you, um, you don't want to do it when, you don't want to turn geocoder on until the end because what happens is 
um, Google will, you get too many hits and they'll, sh they'll shut you down. So there's a, actually a presentation discussing that. Uh, Mike Anello is here from Florida. Uh, did a presentation a few years ago on um, building a site uh, in 45 minutes with geolocation for uh, like farm uh, so then we have a, 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 another um, content type called vendors so We've got clients, we've got uh, Home Depot, we've got Costco, but then we have vendors. So one of the things that makes this company unique is that they handle waste response in the entire country, all 48 states, and they just recently did a rather large one in the Virgin Islands um, because of the hurricane that went through and trashed Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and, and, and parts of Florida. So, so this kind of gives you an idea. One of the things when you use feeds, now I use feeds to, to pull in all these databases. I don't, has anybody here used feeds before? Okay, so when you use feeds, you can uh, import CSV files. So I got these basically CSV files course which you can display in an Excel spreadsheet and I had to massage them some but one of the things we found out was that on their forms they had the same field sometimes two or three times that so what I had to do was I had to take a field and map it to three different other names so I had like I've got the client store number and I map that to title and I also mapped it to the spill site name and then to the Costco site name or whatever the other vendor was. So we imported up this, all this database uh, information uh, for all these people. And you can kind of see the display in the upper right that, uh, that shows what the, uh, what the actual node looks like for a set of vendor. Yeah, that's FedEx, that's a, that's a, a vendor location, or a, a client location. Also, let's, let me stay here. Um, oh, I need to come over here. My screen's at too high resolution, can't read it. Um, so, when I went through and did the, um, filling out the, the forms and, and creating things, I've got a field up here, it's called inline city state set. And what happened was the way we wanted to display it, um, when you have different fields, they want to be on different lines. So I created a display sweep field and used tokens to put uh, those things all in line the way it showed up on the form. And then there's some things too. I've got fields here that are hidden. This is using display sweep. So I've got hidden fields that show up elsewhere, but they don't show on that particular node. If you if you disable those fields, then you can't use, uh, reference them in entity reference. So they have to be hidden, but then you can still reference them for the next process. So this gives you an idea how many fields are on this authorization form. Um, there's a lot of them. I'm trying to think there may be 20, 30, 35 different fields on one on each node. So entity reference auto field. This is this is what's cool. This is what makes it so they don't have to add the information every time. <clears throat> so up here it's entity reference auto field. There's the fields that we're going to auto fill. So I've got city, state, street, zip, spill site name, EPA ID number. And this down here targets the actual nodes, content type that we're, used, that we're referencing from. Now over here I've got another reference. And this is the, <coughs> I call it the sub-reference, and this is the vendor reference. 
So <laughs> they click this button, they get a drop down, they pick one, and it automatically fills that. And I'm going to show how this all works later on. <coughs> so <coughs> when we do the spill report, I'm referencing a lot more fields. All of these fields are fields that come from the first um, entity, which is the, uh, the, the uh, authorization. So by creating an entity reference and using entity reference autofill and choosing all these other fields, that automatically populates that document. It's still not done. They, have, they get response from people in the field and they still have to uh, add in um, fields that they put in by hand, but the main part of it is automatically put together. So this is kind of display suite in action. I use this layout here. That's a display suite layout. It's called two column bricks. And there's a header above left, above right, middle, lower left, lower right. And, and the reason this I, I chose this to become obvious a little bit later and help me to um, create the CSS and, and target different areas so that so that it would display a certain way. Um, so you can kind of see right here that we've got there's the header and over there that goes to that header and so on and so forth above left. And then in here there's um, this is display suite in ex expert mode. And what happens here is you can change the HTML. So this is what it looks like when we're done. This, this is what the node looks like when it's generated, but it also generates a PDF, or you can generate the PDF afterwards. So this is an adaptation of their form, and it looks like a form, and it looks kind of official. This is an idea of how you change the, um, in Drupal, so the Drupal output, output here for this div is field, field name, field company, field type list, all that. Using display suite, I just called it outwrap. <laughs> that's because that's what I use CSS to target the outline for each one of those things. So, and there's other, you know, some of them were grouped together. So there's uh, one here called Outwrap Nobot. And that was one where I, didn't, I wanted to group them together so there's no line underneath and so you'd see a little larger form. Okay, to generate a PDF. There's different uh, modules for generating PDFs, but what I used was the uh, PDF to MPDF, or using MPDF. And I think I tested the other ones out, and I don't re recall exactly. But when they generated a PDF, they generated the whole node. And what this does is generate just the content. So, in other words, you saw the PDF. Um, let me go back here. You see the top, the headers, and everything that's, that would be on the normal node is not there. It just has the form. So that was... That was the reason I chose that particular module. And <clears throat> there's also an option here to open the file in the web browser, save dialog, save to server. Um, now, since I'm not writing custom code, save to server wasn't a good option for us because we wanted, I could not find how to direct it to the files that I wanted to direct it to. So what we do is we save, we just get a save dialog, they save it, then upload it to our job files, which is just another step. Um, gives you the option to do watermark. Um, the uh, custom style sheet, there's a custom style sheet path. Uh, and then there's the permissions, content type permissions that can generate a PDF. So. Okay, display suite code, code field. 
this is where I was showing the inline city state zip so I just wanted to uh, create something that had had it all in one line and basically it's just a, just a lot of uh, tokens here node field city node field state node field zip code text format is display suite code and of course token is chosen and I chose to do that on nodes now this is not a high traffic site essentially they're using it just to, to, to do their workflow. They do have a front page. You know, they've got the listing, the brochure part of the site. But all everything that's really important to them is happening behind the scenes. So if you're not logged in, you don't know any of this is happening. And for that reason, um, some of the stuff we didn't really even uh, try to enhance the SEO on it because we don't want anybody going there anyway. So, all right. The job files content. At first, I, as I said before, I only had two fields. I had a job files and I had photos. Now I've got things like title, instructions, authorization, client, client job information, spill report, client invoice, rapid response invoice, blah, 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 blah waste profile. The reason we did that was they had decided after we had their, their job files that they wanted customers to be able to view them, All right? You're, uh, you're a Home Depot store, you wanna see your report, you could go there, you could view the report, you could view your invoice, you could view a bunch of you know, uh, different things. So we created permissions by roles, and so some of these fields they can't see, some of the fields the vendors can see, but they can't see other, other fields. So there's a, you know, that's just another thing that, that evolved that we had all these, these fields. So this is a, <coughs> an illustration of field permissions. So custom permissions is checked, administrator, mastermind. That's a little joke, I guess. And so it says right here, Here's the people that can view it, Kohl's, Costco, whatever, they, they can view that. If you go over to this one, it's just vendors. So the only thing that's checked there is the vendors. And that would be a field that we had the vendors uploading. So to, to back up a little bit, like I said, they'd get a fax in or they'd send the fax out. They'd get a fax in. Then they'd scan the fax. They'd scan the fax to a PDF. They'd upload it to Dropbox. They'd fill out their spill report on a Word document. They'd scan that in or save it as a PDF. They'd, save it. They'd upload that to Dropbox and they were doing all of this by hand. So essentially it, it, it was just a lot of work. So the new job file content, instead of having just job information and photos, we've kind of isolated it so it says <clears throat> initial manifest, that's actually a, a separate field, it used to be just be job info, so you've got spill report, all these are separate fields now instead of one information field. Um, so this one is viewed by the administrator, this is what a Costco rep would see. We also added something here, if they have, uh, the customer has a Google Drive account, they can save to Google Drive. Um, and there's some different information on here, links to a Chrome doc viewer. Just don't know what people have on their own PCs, what they can view, what they're able to see. So we kind of added, tried to add things in to make it easy for them. Time expired. <laughs> Time expired. Gotta put another quarter in. I guess. How do I fix that? Yeah. There you go. Just went to sleep. Well, I didn't think I'd have it. I even had it on sleep.
Sorry about that. All right. I guess that's it. Okay, let me go somewhere else then. I guess that was the last slide, sorry about that. All right, so here's the website. Um, and you can see that uh, we have shortcuts on the second line of the admin bar. So, and this, this is my login, this is not there, so they don't see everything here, but they do see all the shortcuts. So there's shortcuts for AutoZone, Costco, Home Depot, Kohl's, O'Reilly's, and so on. So, if they wanted to do, they get a call, they get a call, and. It, Costco, so this is what, what pops up. We've got a form here, and this is also using Display Suite for the form. A lot of times when you do, you know, you do note input, everything's on one side. So I've been able to make, it, make a two-column form so they can see. Things typed in red are reminders of things they need to do. But the interesting thing is here, if I go to here, go down and choose that store, what happens is you can see it auto-filled that information. So there's, it's got the Costco number, the street, city, state, call date and time, automatically fills the, the call date and time and that's kind of important so they can, they can figure out, uh, it's got an authorization date and these are, some of these are different uh, formats on the date so, you, so uh, there's also a field here that's called ER time of arrival then there's some fields here that stay the same. These don't change down at the bottom, generally. So, but here's the thing, there's also another reference field and this is the vendor reference. Now what we put in here, they wanted, since they want a fast response time and they want people there to be there in, in uh, less than two hours, <clears throat> I've got this little field called proximity. So if I, if I put a, um, um, a zip code in here and apply it, and this is not going to be one for that particular job, what pops up is the different vendors that they have that are close by. So this defaults to 120 miles, which they consider to be two, two hours. So that's using the geolocation field that we had and then using... Um, um, proximity, I think there's a geolocation proximity module too. So this would give them vendors in that, in that area. So then I'd go back and, and I'm, all, I'm all new here again because I didn't, I didn't open it in a different window which I normally do. But, so then they go to this, this field here, sub-reference and they could pick somebody here and that would automatically fill out different things here. So there's their name, their office location. The only things they have to fill in then generally are the caller name, the caller phone, the on-site phone, uh, the vendor, the, uh, even the stuff on the right here doesn't, the PO number, they have to fill that in. So there's probably five or six fields all they have to fill in, fill out the whole form. 
and then they can save it. So now if I go to and this this is a live site, so this is some content here that's pretty new. So I'm going to pull this one up. You can see when we use the um, that, that PDF module, you get a you get a little tab there that's generate PDF. So if we come in here and I generate PDF, and I click that. should so it gives me a place to save it so if I save this let me just save it to my desktop it's not going to affect what they have uploaded Maybe I didn't save it. Oh yeah. So there, if I open it, there it is. It looks just like the node. It's generated. Uh, so they they upload this then to their job file content and then email it out. So it kind of it made it easy for them to do stuff. Um, the interesting thing now is if we go to. Um, To let me go back to content. So I've got this file here, this is a node, and this does the same thing. And you can see that these fields are also auto-filled, most of them, from the authorization. So they have a few fields, again, they get calls back, they have to fill them in, and so on. So the final piece of the puzzle, <clears throat> let me go here. The final piece of the puzzle was they, they realized that they were still getting files sent to them that were getting faxed and emailed and so on. And they said, well, why don't, we, why don't we see if we can get our vendors to automatically upload them to the website? So basically what happened is we, we took rules and we started creating rules. And I've used uh, conditional rules along with rules and uh, one called rules bonus pack, which exposed certain objects or tokens that you couldn't maybe get without using it or that I have to write a custom rule. So essentially what happened was <clears throat> the event was after saving authorization, create a new entity, and the entity was content type job files. The title was node title token JF. 
So it had the same name as the authorization, okay, the note title, but it had JF so you knew it was a job file when you looked in the folders. Okay, so the next one you save the entity, uh, then you create the spill report. And the same thing, it, was, it had no title slash SR for spill report. Uh, <clears throat> so then we fetched an entity by property. And the property was the input on the form that was the, um, and I can't remember what name it was, but it was like the, the field email, the name, name and field of the email. So we fetched the entity uh, user node field PM email. PM email was project manager for the, for the people out in the field. Um, then we had a condition. We, we checked to see if that email existed on the site. If it didn't exist, we granted access by that user Show a message on the site. Send mail. Hey, you've got access to the site. Um, using your existing, well, if, if they existed, we send an, an, an email. You're an existing, you, this is, you've got access to this site. If they didn't, then the else was uh, the show message on the site, which we really don't need, but I keep it in there. It just shows the people inputting. Create a new entity. So we created a new user. Um, then permissioned them. I did some string manipulation to give them a, a, a unique um, login. Um, so created a temporary field, reversed the string, set a password, um, granted them access, and so on. Sent them an email. So, and then we have conditions like, um, and I, I didn't write the whole rule here, but uh, so if, it, if, if the uh, uh, information came from this company called 3E, and they were 3E ditch, dispatch client, the net company was, would, was granted access also to look at, at the information on the site. Now what that company is, is they are another middleman for um, they're another middleman for people like Home Depot and Costco because they manage certain things. So basically that's how it all happened. There's, there's really no custom code. Um, the rules, we, we added a couple other things to it. The um, in the job file, there's some, a lot of booleans that now they have a job tracker so they can see, did we get this information from them? You know, so that you check it off yes or no or whatever. So they can pull up a whole list of jobs and find out what's ready to bill. There's a whole lot of things in there. Um, the next version will be uh, a lot more compact and um, because they kept asking for, for uh, functionality as we went along and it works they're happy with it but we know we can do better and I won't say it's the best but it does work so that's it thanks